the White House had a summit on STEM equity and inclusion. Really? Yeah. Uh, I watched it. I'm not sure why. <laughs> This is STEM. STEM, yes, um, which I'd never seen before, that acronym, science, technology, engineering, math, and medicine. And uh, I guess it's because uh, I subscribe to science, because I still feel like I need to, and uh, I don't have an institutional affiliation because they've all gone completely insane. And so I got an announcement the morning of, hey, we're doing this, the, we're streaming the White House Summit on STEM Equity and Inclusion, sponsored by science. Like, okay, let's go look. Um, so there's a lot to say, but I just, and, and you know, it wasn't, it wasn't entirely ridiculous, but um, because we have a lot of other things that we're talking about today, I will restrict my comments to, to Quoting the president of Harvey Mudd College, whose name I failed to write down, I apologize, um, concludes her comments. She's on one of many panels. And uh, she concludes her comments by saying, so Harvey Mudd College is one of the Claremont Colleges. It is a very small, very elite, uh, mostly engineering school, a STEM school, basically, STEM with one M. Um, and, uh, you know, advise, as she claims, but it's true, it, it, it advise for um, undergraduates. I think it's entirely undergraduate. I'm not sure about that, actually, um, with the likes of MIT and Caltech. Uh, and, uh, and she has some good things to say. You know, she, she talks about, she, she and others talk about the science of belonging, which sounds ridiculous. But um, actually, the idea that when you walk into a classroom, um, you shouldn't assume that you belong because of your demographics, nor should you assume that you don't belong because of your demographics, and the professor and everyone else in the room should also not make those assumptions. And this is something that we did without ever hearing of the science of belonging, right, in the classroom. Um, but the idea that actually uh, college administrators and, and faculty are waking up to this, you know, decades too late, uh, is at least so something valuable. Uh, but she concludes her comments by saying that uh, on campus, quote, we also continuously celebrate our cultural value that every person, every student, every faculty member, every staff member is responsible for the success of every other person on campus. That struck me as something that could just be washed away, ignored, whatever, okay, do you think you're doing good for people and helping, you know, raise everyone by not, you know, making sure that no one is left behind. But this strikes me as insane, completely insane, completely anti-meritocratic, um, opposed to the idea of uh, striving on your own, for instance, um, or um, being held responsible for your own failures. Both of, both of those things um, are, are weakened by the idea that you, no matter how good you are, no matter how bad you are, at whatever it is that you're trying to do, are responsible for the success of everyone around you. Well, no, you're not. You know, it's funny because I remember running into what is effectively a different version of the same concept. Mm -hmm. And I remember running into it the first time. And it was as Evergreen was coming apart. And the claim, which again, these claims, they sound so lovely, right, on first hearing. Mm -hmm. But the claim was that Evergreen had a very serious problem because people graduated with different levels of capability. And the idea was that Evergreen was actually morally required to ensure that everyone graduated equally capable. It's and I, Harrison Bergeron University. Right. And I heard that and I thought, oh, God, there is only one way to do that which is to hobble those who are highly capable, even if they were right, which they weren't, but even if they were right that these disparities were the result of unfairness, right, that was based on sex or race or whatever, even if they were correct, the idea that somebody who enters college gifted in math, right, has to basically graduate with people who are either brought up to their level, which will be impossible, yep. right, because you can't take somebody who has no math skill and bring them up to the you know, most capable person's level, or they will have to be sabotaged for four years. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like they don't, 
they don't, uh, first of all, I'm not even sure, you know, that they wouldn't come up with euphys euphemisms for sabotage that would, of course they would. make them comfortable. Yeah. But they, don't, they wouldn't even stop upon hearing that and thinking, oh, yeah. Now, we can't have everybody graduate at the same level because th that means ruining everybody's capacity that they have, right? Right. The only level you can equalize them all to is completely incapable, right? That's the only achievable yeah. place where and, that can happen. And you would be a fool to go to a school, to matriculate at a school that had that as its, what does she say, cultural value. That, that would be an insane place to go if they really are serious about it. In fact, this is an argument that I made in an email to our colleagues at Evergreen. I said, you can't do this because nobody, you are effectively talking about transferring um, educational well-being from certain students to other students. And the students from whom you are transferring it will simply not show up, mm -hmm. right? Why you would you show up? You will get your wish because the standards will plummet. Well, the standards will plummet, but the point is you need all of those, you know, this was not a rich college. It needs right. a student body willing to come and pay tuition. And, you know, to the extent that you're going to drive those who are most capable off, you know, it doesn't matter whether they were capable for reasons that ultimately come from unfairness. You need them to show up in order to have a college. And um, Well, you also need the most capable people to show up. To, to be awesome, to inspire, to educate others, uh, to provide foils for the faculty to help bring the other students who maybe, maybe are less capable because they've been disadvantaged and could become more capable, but they need to be able to hear the conversation. Some people are less capable because they're just less capable. But a lot of people are less capable because they've been disadvantaged, but they're not going to learn how to be more capable if the only people they're surrounded with are also not capable. Like, yeah. that's not how learning happens. No, it's, it's, uh, it's complete, um, complete nonsense. And the irony of ironies in the case of, of our former college was that our former college was unique in the fact that it was really well designed to deal with high potential people who hadn't been well served by whatever system they That's came right. from, right? It was well positioned Students to take- Students were awesome. Yeah, they really were. Yeah. And the possibility to take people who had high potential but hadn't been reached by anybody and give them a lifeline was a mission mm -hmm. that, that Evergreen was uniquely positioned to address. And it's so rewarding. My God, it's so amazing to, you know, at, at a moment when people are claiming, claiming that, you know, everyone needs to be forced to succeed on, you know, on the rubric that someone else has created who maybe never even met a kid, right? And then to actually be able to, to kind of like open up the world to people who know that they're hungry but don't know what they're hungry for and maybe haven't even really ever had a meal, like here. This is, this is a bunch of options. You start making choices, and then maybe you start getting funneled here or there, but how extraordinary, you know, as opposed to, no, just accept that because the first 18 years of your life you didn't get good education, or you had an unfortunate family situation, or, you know, or, or you were malnourished, or you were, you know, any number of things, well, then just give up now. Like, n n no. W we need institutions. We need more than functional, outstanding institutions that do not uh, discriminate against students who didn't have advantages but have extraordinary potential. And Evergreen was that place. And I don't think there is a place now that does it. And it is, it is ideas like this that apparently I had forgotten, actually. That you, had, you had heard at Evergreen. I heard come from the current president of Harvey Mudd College an elite school, as if this is an honorable thing to be doing, and it's not. It's it's the death of the university. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, it, it's cognitive communism, and the point That's is, right. look, the problem with I was all, trying not to use the word, but yeah, this is what it is. Yes, the, the problem with all versions of communism is that it, it's an empty space. It's not a real place you can go, right? It's not obvious that it would be desirable if you could go there, but it doesn't work, right? It doesn't work. In the work. theoretical solution set, you want to have it taking, taking up play, a it's, space, but... Yeah, it, it's not available in design space. It yeah, is inherently yeah. self-unstable and doesn't accomplish the things you need to accomplish in order to make a civilization work. It doesn't accomplish the things you need to make a university work. And so the question is, all right, in light of the fact that communism is both sucky and impossible, right, what else might we do? 
hey, here's an idea. How about we increase everybody's capacity as much as we can in the brief period of time we have contact with them, right? Wouldn't that be cool? If I may, by analogy, in light of the fact that the the vaccines are neither safe nor effective, what else (laughs) else? might we do? Anybody got anything else? Like, is it possible? There's another possibility on the table. Yeah, anybody? (laughs) Anything? <laughs> Anybody? And then, you know, the next thing is overlooking Dr. Corey and uh, <laughs> Dr. Bhattacharya and all of these other, Everyone these other folks. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. It, it, it's no, sucky and impossible. Yeah, but other than that, like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, anything better? Like, yes, we got lots of better Does things. Does anybody have any Are other ideas great? that we haven't yet declared evil? You know? 